Hey there, scientist Amanda with another Do Science at Home moment with the Kentucky Science Center. We know a lot of people are missing our Be in a Bubble exhibit, so we're bringing you some science with bubbles that you can also display in your home. So for this activity, you're going to need some bubbles, a shallow dish, and a clean straw. The first thing we are going to do is make a sculpture out of bubbles. One extra supply you might want to have on hand is some kind of eye protection because it's no fun getting bubbles in your eyes. So all we're going to do, we're going to, I poured just a little bit of bubble solution in this flat tray. You don't want to get too much because that's going to make it a little more difficult to construct your sculpture. And then everyone knows what to do. You're just going to blow. A lot of people, whenever you hand them a straw, though, and liquid, their first thought is to drink it. And we don't want to drink the bubble juice today. So you can grab a few things that roll and test out blowing with the straw. That way we know how to blow bubbles and not drink them. And that's a fun activity in itself. But now that we know how to blow out of a straw, we're going to go ahead and build our sculpture. So as you are blowing your bubbles in here, you're gonna wanna try to keep your straw flat, close to the bottom of the dish. You can also do this just um, on a tabletop or a tablecloth if you would like and spread it out. Once you get your bubbles started, it's fun to go in and see how big you can make some of the bubbles and see how tall of a sculpture you can make. So we'll stop there for now. Now, the shape of a bubble is consistent. It's always like a sphere. That's because the bubble solution has something called surface tension. That surface tension is the strength of the top of the solution. It all links together and it's pretty strong. But it has the same amount of tension all around. If it were shaped like a cube or a pyramid, there would be more pressure on different points and it wouldn't be able to sustain it. So typically bubbles are spherical. If you look at your sculpture though, you can start to see different shapes start to form where those bubbles meet. So a fun thing here is to look at what shapes you can create and watch how your sculpture evolves as the bubbles pop. I could do that all day. All right, so we're gonna move on and it's kind of, the next activity is a spin-off of this a little bit. Instead of having a three-dimensional temporary sculpture, temporary art piece, we're going to make some bubble paintings. Now, this can be done in a variety of ways, but the basic thing we're going, the method is like what we just did. I have some shallow trays that I have colored using liquid watercolor. Uh, that can be purchased at any craft store or um, online, liquid watercolor. You can also try it out with tempera paint or even food coloring. You just wanna make sure that it is saturated enough that when you blow your bubbles, it actually leaves an imprint on the paper. And it's this is science. You can guess and check. If there's not enough, you can just add some more. So I've prepared just a blue and a red for us to um, demonstrate this today. And it's also a good idea to use different straws for each color so you don't mix them in their container. So I'm gonna go ahead and blow bubbles like we did for the sculpture and then catch them on paper. All right, you can use any, any size dish. Shallow is going to be easier because it's gonna be easier to get those bubbles up over the rim. And then you're just going to take your paper and lower it on there, pop all those bubbles, and it's going to leave its mark. Because that color is incorporated in the liquid, 
anywhere that the liquid or the bubble solution touches, it's going to leave some bubbles. So we'll go ahead and do some of the red as well and overlap them to see what kind of colors are generated. All right, we have a nice amount of bubbles there on top. I'm just gonna let them pop. And when you pull it away, you might still have some bubbles on there, but that's okay. Um, this experiment is a lot of fun if you use different colors because you can then go in and see how those colors interacted and what new colors are created. So if you try this at home, try all sorts of different colors. You could do the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, or get creative and try some others. And don't forget to share your results with us on social media. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.